<laughs> What's, What's up, up dude? Titan? What's up? Let me adjust this a little. What's up? How you doing, man? It's going to be really hard to not look at my own face the whole time. <laughs> you all get used. Have you done any of these live things yet? Never. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm just looking at me. What's up, dude? You okay? <laughs> What's up, man? Yeah, good, man. I like that background. It's good, man. Helps when your your missus helps when your missus has a professional studio to work from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cohesive with your uh, with your posts. Yeah, exactly. We uh, we were in a we're in a flight pattern, so you're gonna hear planes. So that's not good. That'll be fine. It'll be fine. What have you been up to, man? I mean, nothing. COVID, COVID baby. <laughs> Uh, well, painting. I got a, yeah. I got a lot of shitty shit going on. So, not. Let's not. Let's not be negative. Got a lot of stuff going <laughs> Mate, on. Mate, we can talk about whatever you want. I mean, do we have any questions? We can get into like this this soon as well. <laughs> uh. So hey. Um. God, you can't tattoo me, dude. Uh. Sorry, I have no idea how to do this. Uh, it's all good, man. I don't know. What, what have you been up to? You've been fucking busy, dude. Well, see, you say that, but I don't think I have. Like, I've been trying to do stuff to keep, keep myself occupied. But, I mean, like, these things, I mean, it's like two hours a week. Sure. You know? Um, and then I've done a couple of, like, pet portraits, and they're, they're just, like, evening stuff. But I think it's just, like... Normally, like, I wake up at about 8 o'clock in the morning. Then I do all the stuff I need to do before I get ready for work. Then work from 10, sometimes, sometimes 12, till the end of the day. So that period of, t of the days, I've, I've just been sitting doing nothing. So it's been okay. incredibly boring. You say two hours, but two hours, and then you put all the, all the promo together. And that's not easy. Yeah. You just, it doesn't just click. I put promo together, and it sucks. Uh, yeah. Anything. I don't know, man. I, it just, it, I think what it is, is I'm, I'm normally so busy. I'm normally like, I normally try and find those little two hour gaps to do separate projects for stuff. But because I haven't got tattoo in now, those, those separate little projects become the only thing I'm doing. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's the same for me, but I've been, dude, I, besides obviously not being financially fluid, the, this whole quarantine has been cool. Really? Like, you know, I feel like a lot of people have found more time for themselves and found more time to do shit. I have. Yeah. I've had. Yeah. I've had. A I mean, time. for me, I've, I've definitely spoken to my family and friends a lot more. I think that's yeah. something that's come, that's been positive out of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've done. I don't know. I, I feel like I work so much. I post very little, but I. Yeah. I feel people, people ask me like, or I've heard people say to my clients like, oh, he doesn't tattoo very much. And I'm like, I like to keep my shit a secret, dude. Like, See, this, is, this is actually quite, this is I something like, I want, I've got. Go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say, I've written a few things down. Like I, I tried to do a bit of research on, on you just to, you know, cause li little things that I want to find out, I presume other people probably want to know as well. Yeah, sure. But yeah, man, you've got like barely anything. Like there's, I found, the one interview I found was in Total Tattoo, which obviously I can't read because it's a physical copy. But sure. I couldn't find anything else other than like little snippets of like just like a bio and stuff like that. I couldn't, I couldn't. And, and even your Instagram, it's got 20 pictures on it. <laughs> yeah, I just cleaned it out, dude. I had it down to one. That was tight. Why? I don't know, man. I don't like to put too much of myself out there. I feel like everyone's starting to do the same shit. So I'm trying yeah. to not not have my shit out there i i post like my paintings dude i don't post my paintings until they're absolutely done i won't post yeah. a little sneak i won't post in progress i mean every once in a while but not like everybody else you know yeah. i like to keep my shit a secret dude i like to keep my projects i mean i'll i'll post something on my on my story or whatever but i don't think everyone needs to know everything about me yeah you no I, I, mean? I definitely agree that and I, like, I do i i do try and keep a lot of my private stuff away from, because you see so many people putting 
a lot, like everything on, on Instagram. And I do try and keep my, um, this page as professional as possible and keep it just to work. But I, I found that like, cause I, with, with back pieces and, and larger projects, I always try and wait. I even like do one photo to start with, as in like just the stencil. Yes. And then I will wait all the way until the end to post like the yeah. finished product. Um, just cause I think if you, I see it with a few people that like, they'll post every time they tattoo that person, they'll post like that little snippet of it. And I almost find by the time I've, the top, by the time I've, I've finished the tattoo, I think, oh, I've seen that a hundred times. And I, the impact I think is lost a little bit. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not bashing anyone's hustle, but if I've no, seen, no. if I've seen the same painting in progress or the same sleep in progress, it loses its value for me, for me, when I look at it, it loses its value at the end versus I'm just like, fuck, did you see this back piece that, that uh, Steve Moore posted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, dude, that's crazy. You've never seen it before. You've seen like a little snippet, but there's this crazy back piece he's done. And you're yeah. just like, I'm, I'm I think away. Steve Moore is like the perfect person for that because his stuff must take, I mean, I know he's super quick, but like his stuff is so crazily detailed that it must take, you know, two years to complete it. And then suddenly yeah. he just like slaps it up on the internet and you're like, where did that come from? Like it's the yeah. most insane thing you've ever seen. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's been under wraps and the impact is so much greater, I think. Yeah, so there's, there's a little bit of negativity with not posting. I went through a spell where I was posting like in progress stuff, back pieces and things like that. And I was doing mostly back pieces. And then I stopped, I stopped posting everything until it was like done or almost done. And mm. I've had, I've done way less back pieces and way more sleeves because I post a lot of sleeves. And, mm. uh, and I, dude, I have like six to 10 back pieces right now that are like just on the back and they're almost done. And I'm they're They're all going to end at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be back piece, back yeah, piece, yeah. Back, piece, back piece on my, on my page. But I don't know, man. I, I think, I think people are different. Matt, who's up next, fucking great friend of mine. I had him on the podcast. I haven't released the episode yet, but cause it's a lot of editing and to do, but <laughs> um, you, I mean, you know, even just with this is like just putting things together. Isn't the easiest thing in the world, but uh, he posts all the time and I think it really fucking works for him. Well, and, the, and the, so I'm, I'm of the same opinion of you. I'm maybe not, I mean, looking at your profile, you, I think you really have got only like 25 photos on there. So, so yeah. you're the like, massive extreme side of it but i do agree with you i think that i i try and keep it so i post maybe when i'm tattooing i probably post maybe once every two weeks um uh but speaking to bell uh you've met bell right my missus yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean like her job is is based in social media and, and and youtube and all that and you know she always tells me like you need to post every day because the way Instagram works is if you, if you don't, then you just get swallowed up and no one, no one sees that. So that impact is lost because you're not, you know, helping all along. Um, and I've actually noticed it from, from these last few weeks, because I've been posting a lot just to promote these things and the, the draw with me things and all that. And because I'm using every feature of Instagram. Yeah. I, I've gained like so many more followers um, sure. just from, from using all the different like platforms or different features on Instagram. Um, cause I've been using the, 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 T, the IG TV thing to put these on afterwards. Obviously the fate of the Instagram live and it just seems to be, yeah, if I'm using it more then I, I've noticed a noticeable change in like how many people are following or engaging with stuff. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. And I've, I've read, I've read things about that. You know, you go through these, uh, I think people think that once you get to a certain level or once, once you're, once you're fucking number, your, your, your number is, is a certain level, then certain things don't apply to you, but they certainly do. And you're, you're like, why does nobody like this post? I love this. It's, we have the same, we have the same concerns, right? Uh, yeah. so I read on it back when they were doing the algorithm thing and everyone was freaking out and I read that, but, I did. I, I, this is what I talked to Matt on the podcast about. Uh, so I was scrolling one day and I was just going through my feed and 
I'm not going to use any names. I don't think I did on the podcast either, but I, I scrolled past the tattooer that I love. And I, I just like scrolled. It, past it was me when you scrolled. <laughs> it, it was Anthony. Yeah. No, I, I, I scrolled right past it and I was like, wait a minute, let me back up. That was fucking incredible. And I looked at it and I was like, this is amazing. I, I, why, why did I bother just scrolling right past? And, uh, I, I started doing research and, and, I mean, just not, not, I wasn't looking at books and shit, but I started paying attention to that. Right. And some of my favorite tattooers, uh, they'll post every once in a while. And every single time they post, I'm like, look at this, look at this, look at this fucking thing. Look at it. It's amazing. You know? Yeah. Uh, but they post every once in a while. And I thought back, I'm like, why, why did I not like that person's tattoo so much? And I think it was because this person posted every single day. So this stuff so, sort of started getting diluted and I just, I just wasn't, wasn't feeling it like I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that's, it's, it's a hard balance. It's a hard balance. I think, and I told Matt the same thing. I think it was, a, he was a perfect person to talk to about it because he does post. So he's on the opposite. Well, he's the king. He's the king of like tattoo or Instagram, isn't he? He's so, yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here. He's here. And I think, I need to be right about here personally yeah. for me. I think I need to, I think I need to post a little bit more for sure. But uh, I mean, it's hard, man. It's, it's hard too, because I think everyone's always praising you and telling you cool shit about your stuff. Um, and it's hard not to, uh, I, I think people think like, Oh, he's, they're just on that level and they just kill it all the time. But dude, we all have the same insecurities as everybody else. Yeah, I, agree, you know? I mean, I think uh, talk, talking about comments and that, and like, I don't, I don't want to sound ungrateful. Um, and I do really appreciate when people like support and say lovely things about my tattoos, but I almost don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like no, for sure. I'll, I'll read the comments and I'll, and I'll, and I'll be like, okay. <laughs> and yeah, I, yeah. I love that people, you know, are being so complimentary, but it is so difficult to, because I think most most people I've ever spoken to about, you know, tattooing and just art in general is, is they hate their own work and they, they find the flaws in their own work. And it's really difficult to accept compliments about, about work because all we see is what we could improve or make better, right? Yeah, yeah. So one thing I tell my clients, because they're always like, oh, I love, like, I'll be drawing it and it'll be, it'll be day of. And I'm like... I think I want to change this and I think I want to change that. And they're like, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I love it. And I always tell them, I say, it's easy for me to pull into my bag of tricks and, and impress you. That's easy. Yeah. Impressing myself is, is the hardest part. I, I need to be happy with it. And then I want my clients to walk around and know that they got like my, my full effort, like my yeah. absolute best tattoo. And it's just a, a, a notch above the last one I did. You know, yeah. I know that's a think, thing, but that's no, no, no. I mean, it, and, it, and it's important as well because I think the the thing that that makes me the happiest is when a customer will come back in and be like, "Do you know what? Firstly, my mum likes it. Secondly, people have stopped me on the street, like random people have stopped me on the street to ask me who did that tattoo. Like that's the stuff that actually I'm like, oh wow, like people are actually taking notice of it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, you do that. So it's like you said, people can give you compliments all they want, especially clients, like no need to, to downgrade their comment, their, their compliments, but they've come to us for a reason. So yeah. of course, and it's on their body. So of course they're going to say, this is, this is great. But two things within the last couple of months, the biggest compliments I ever got, I've got a good, I have a good client here in San Diego, Jeff Walker, who I tattoo quite a bit. He's always like, dude, I get stopped by my leg all the time like everyone is always asking who did my leg and he's he's fully tattooed and yeah and i was i met up with him at starbucks one day and we were just sitting outside and shout out starbucks dude get get us a sponsorship but anyway uh <laughs> uh do you know i've got i've was, got like one of those plastic starbucks cups and i was gonna have it for my yeah. water and i was like do you know what imagine if i put it I was like come on starbucks <laughs> yeah. sponsor yeah, the podcast yeah. <laughs> So anyway, we're sitting there and we're talking about the inner part of his leg and I look over and this, this dude is in the middle of telling his lady, like, look at his leg, look at his leg. And she's, she looks at it and she's like, wow. And I was like, that is, they have no idea I did that tattoo. 
right, right, right. Yeah. And it's it like a genuine biggest, compliment. It was it was the biggest compliment uh, that I've ever gotten. And then the second yeah. biggest compliment that I've ever gotten, and I told him this at the time, but I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Justin Hartman. <laughs> but he told me the other day, <laughs> he, we were texting, and he told me the other day, he was like, we just, we'll gas each other up every once in a while, you know? And uh, he's he's the same as me, dude. He just, he doesn't know how fucking good he is. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like, you're probably one of 10 tattooers I would actually get tattooed by right now. And he's dude, like, like I, and he's I, I agree with him as like, well. And- I, like my list of people I want to get tattooed by is is minute, uh, and yeah. you would, like I would absolutely get a tattoo from you tomorrow. And it's actually, um, do you know what's funny? When um, when we met, uh, it was, I think it was it was London Convention, right? Yeah. yeah. After party. Um, I think talk. Uh, we, we're like gassing each other up here. <laughs> people are going to be thinking we got. We're fucking heads, awesome, but, uh... dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What, what, this is not what I want to put out there. <laughs> Um, one, one of my one one thing that really really sticks with me actually is um we were chatting at the, the after party and um i can't remember how we got into the conversation but i think i think you you said something complimentary about my work and i was like yeah whatever you're just saying it and then you get your phone up and you yeah. scroll through and you've like screenshotted one of my <laughs> tattoos and you look see dude look i, I screenshot it and i was just like oh I had my to god say it's, it's on your story <laughs> It was the horse back piece that you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, I, one day I'll draw a horse and I'll go back to this and I'll fucking be like, look, it's got to be at least that good. You know? But honestly, that, that, when you showed me, because I think because ne- we hadn't met before and like I'd always look up, looked up to your work and, you know, hearing something like that, um, from from you just yeah just like oh my god <laughs> like it kind of made just made me feel really nice it, london i mean likewise again i don't want to keep gassing us up but like london is a place it's like a, yeah when you get <laughs> Sorry, a mate. <laughs> oh i got hold on i got i got a, i got a, my special guest here too <laughs> that was right bell thinking she's hilarious mine's little too <laughs> so, oh look Oh, this is Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, we've got serious stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm in the shop right now because I think I told you earlier this week, we have to move in all, amid all this crazy stuff. And that's kind of what I was saying, the shitty stuff earlier. It's not that crazy, but... Right, right, right. Dude, I mean, wearing masks everywhere, that's not a big deal, but they, people don't want to show houses unless you have, like... You know, everything's in order, and yeah, uh, yeah. they're so my the owner of my house is selling, so they're showing my house. They just happened to pick right now, and I was like, "Fuck, I got this thing to do." So I'm just at the shop. No one's here anyway, so that's why I got the cool backdrop by uh, Brett Rose Piler. That's so cool, man. Yeah, he's it's so cool. This, dude. That's actually that's actually one of the things I've written down is um the guys at your shop, and quite a lot of you, you you kind of have a similar feel to your work is that something yeah. that you is that something that you you wanted or is that something that has happened over time because i know i know um a couple of my uh, obviously you know echo and uncle alan sure. their work before they started to work to work together was so far apart and then when they worked together for two years it started to come together a little bit and i think it's just a natural progression is that something that you found yeah so definitely uh i'm super lucky to work with the dudes i work with uh i think so we came together naturally and i think we were all sort of kind of shooting in a similar direction yeah yeah, when yeah. You work when you work with dudes who are so similar and so like-minded and when you come in and you're like oh i fucking killed this thing wait wait till the guys see this and you come in and everyone else is crushed harder you're like okay well, tomorrow <laughs> crushed, you know? uh so so i think we all started sort of learning tricks from each other and kind of like meshing together and going in the same direction. But I think now we've got a grasp on that after the core of us have have been together for almost five years. So me, Justin, Chris, and Lucas, we've been together for almost five years. And so I think we've got a good handle on each other. And we're now we're kind of like doing our own thing. I mean, similar paths, but doing our own thing. And then, 
And then we have Steve, Mark, and uh, Michael J. We call him Juice. Dude, it's like we're just really fucking lucky to work with each other. And have so your shop must be pretty big there. Do you, do you all work full time there? Or do you take it in turns? Things yeah, to yeah. I mean, everyone travels quite a bit. Mikey, he travels quite a bit. Uh, Mark, Walker X on Instagram. Yeah, he he, fought, uh, he he goes to England quite a bit, uh, and then all of us go to conventions or whatever. And the shop's pretty big. It's it's uh, we tattoo in one big open space, uh, so it's not cool. like crazy busy. And then we're up in seven days a week. Some people have different. We have scattered. Right, right. Off. right. I right, prefer when it's full you, house. Yeah, do you have your own own sections or do you kind of rotate? Yeah, yeah. So, like mine is right there. Yeah, Chris is right there, and then everyone else is like right here. Awesome, man. This is like in in the big room. Cool. It's like so, um, what, it's right. Yeah. Um. Some I read somewhere that uh, it said you're a magician. Is that in terms of your tattoo work, or are you an actual magician? I think I think what they're referring to is uh, my bed politics. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a magic dick. Uh, that is false. <laughs> I'm going to defer from that and ask you, so you were at Scythe and Spade, and now you're opening your own shop? I am indeed, man, yeah. Okay, that's super cool. I, the, I mean, you can't see anything from your posts because it's a shell, but that's exciting. Mate, I'm, I can't wait. It's, um, so what happened was when – so. The lease ended at the at Scythe and Spade uh, uh, in April, and there was a decision to be made because I always like obviously with you know with tattooing, I think the end goal is always to have your own place, or at least it is for most people, sure, sure. I think. And when we moved to Canada, it became very apparent that suddenly it was achievable, um, just because it's a lot cheaper than London, and I've just got more time to put into that sort of stuff. So. It was always in the back of my mind. It was always going to happen in the next year, two years. But when, when the lease at the, where Sard and Spade was, when that ended, it was kind of, it pushed me to, to just get my ass into gear, basically. Um, so I let Sam know that my intentions were to <clears throat> do my own thing. And then it just was easier to use that lease to, to go our separate ways sort of thing. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so that, you got, they're moving. They're moving, right? I, they're also I'm moving, yeah, because, because um, yeah, just, I, I guess, that's just too expensive. That, that, the, um, the rent went, like, astronomically high and just, all that rubbish that, you know, the boring stuff that, that, you know, you have to think about. But it was just, yeah, easier at that point. It was like a natural time to be like, okay, well, it's time for me to now do this thing. And, um, man, it's been, it's been, a roller coaster ride considering this is like we signed the lease for our new place probably two weeks before the corona thing hit yeah i remember you posted a clip and i think we were we were two days from getting shut down in california it might have been the it, it was right around there and i was like i i mean your hints were subtle but i was like no like knowing what my end goals and like what that sort of looks like i was like yeah damn i think he's like opening, I, I think actually, I think, no, I'm wrong. You DM'd me and were like, yo, I'm opening my own shop. <laughs> you kind of let me in. I really Come and guess. <laughs> yeah, you, I didn't guess. You let me in. I just remember that. But then I was like, damn, he's doing that like right now. Like that's got to be hard. Yeah. It's I mean, be super hard. It's, it's, it's been okay, man. Because, I mean, thankfully we had a bit of money saved up. Um, the construction team, what are you doing? Oh, Bell's over in the corner listening. <laughs> um, Bell, that's super annoying. <laughs> I can hear the delay in like what we're saying on her phone, like right oh, next yeah. to me. I know, I just came in to listen. It's mm. interesting. Anyway, yeah. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah. So we had a bit of money saved up. The construction because we're having it built like to spec. Like we we've we've like all the countertops, all the cabinetry is like built exactly how we want it. Like all the rooms are being put up from scratch. Like it was an empty shell. Um, and we, again, we signed, signed the contract with the construction team just before this hit as well. Thankfully, like I called him up and I was like, hey man, like I can't work. Like this is going to be really difficult. Like we're going to have to delay it. 
and um, they they just been super cool with it. They're like, no, no, it's cool. Like we we understand, we get it. Um, like we'll we'll get you up and running. So once this is all over, you can just go straight in uh, and start working. Um, so I mean, it, it's been difficult because like certain things like ordering like countertops in and, and certain lights and all this like it's taking a little bit longer because obviously things are just taking longer at the moment but other than that it's all it's all going going ahead and, and nothing's really um really been stopped by it you know yeah uh i so i think that i think the trick i said this for years i think the trick with running a good shop at least nowadays especially when people have the power of instagram and the power of everyone Almost nobody requires walk-ins to make a living, right? No. Your walk-ins come from right here. Like, like right yeah. here, this is walk-ins right now. And <laughs> it's like our portfolio. Like, so yeah. um, I, think this, I think the secret is keeping your artists happy, right? And that's, there's finding yeah. that balance between how, how, did, how does everyone that works uh, for me and with me not feel ripped off by what I'm charging them? but yeah. they, they also feel comfortable. I think Chris does a pretty good job. I feel like nobody feels, I mean, when things are up and running and normal and life is normal, no one feels, it, it's, dude, I've said it a million times, like, you're not gonna find a better spot than this. We, we don't pay an astronomical amount. We don't feel ripped off. He buys yeah. things that, are, um, that he doesn't need to. You know, We always have snacks in the break room. Uh, there's there's plenty of stuff to offer the clients, and I feel like yeah. if you keep your if you keep your artists happy, then you'll keep your business happy, right? The, yeah. the, yeah, the thing does. that happens there's this fucking trickle effect where one dude who's like the number one in town opens a shop, and everyone's like, I want to work for that dude, and then they they get the walk-ins and the and the clientele, and they're like, well, fuck, now I just have my own clientele, I don't need to pay him fifty percent. And he was, he's like, well, fuck you, I'll fill the chair. And then all these good yeah. artists start shedding off. And now this dude just wants to fill the chairs. And yeah. and now it's a shitty shop. It was the number one shop in town. And now he's just filling the chairs because he's used to the money. And it's, yeah. I think that's the secret, dude. I think I think keeping your clients, or excuse me, keeping your artists happy is like. Yeah, I think, thing. I mean, I, um, I worked, when I was in London, I worked uh, in the same place my entire career. And, and it, you know, it, it was a walk-in shop, you know, it was just a, um, you know, just, just on the street and, and that was it. Like we, we were kept, we were happy. Like, oh, you know, my, my boss, Glenn, he was, you know, he, he, he was addressed things. He was kept everyone happy. And, and it wasn't so much about, I mean, obviously everyone that worked there was a good title, but it wasn't a case of finding, you know, it wasn't a case of finding the best tattooers in the world and getting them to come work. It was more a case of finding like the personalities that work with each other. Um, and I think that that's super important as well, because I feel like if you have too many big egos or too many, you know, differences of opinion, that's just never going to work because people start getting the arse and, and then this little click start forming and, and it all just goes tits up. But I think if you, if you concentrate more on, on the people working with each other, it doesn't necessarily mean everyone's got to be super duper like, one think one way or, or you know have the same opinions and stuff they just have to have like personalities that mold and work together you know and i think that that's something that we had in our old shop uh and that's something you know i i wouldn't really want to learn from 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 my my old boss and how he had things set up and and yeah you know that's that's always kind of yeah how i thought about it yeah so i yeah i agree i think it's, it's a i think there's a recipe where yeah. it's not like that's it, a recipe is that, yeah, this definitely. much black, this much saturation, this much skin, you know, that sort of thing. It's like a recipe. And I think another thing that Chris has done really well is that he, he waited for the right tattooers to come along and it, it kind of right, just right, naturally right. happened, but he wasn't just hiring anybody, yeah. you know, he worked yeah. alone for a long time and then Justin came and then I came and Lucas came and he was just really patient. And I feel like work and then like people's vibes are very important and i think that's what makes the shop special too yeah i mean that's what we're gonna do as well we're gonna for the first little bit maybe a year we're just gonna have guests come through and then just naturally it'll, it'll progress and and you know we'll figure it out as we go along because the good thing about our spot is like 
I don't need a bunch of artists to make the rent. Like, you know, I, I'm, yeah. you know, financially stable to be able to cope with it on my own. And I want to use that to be able to just feel things out, you know, like I don't want to just jump straight into having a team and then yeah. it will go tits up straight away. You know, I want to just do it little by little and then just work, work it from there. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, uh, yeah. are you starting with those guys two minutes ago? Okay, cool. Uh, we should do that again <laughs> because I think we have, I have way more to talk about. Um, yeah, we should, I think our... I'm, from doing these, I'm learning that these short, amounts of time just aren't enough because we kind of get into a conversation and then we're like okay next person so i think i'm gonna going forward i'm probably just gonna do like one or two people and then just talk talk for a little bit longer so but just yeah. but before you go man thank you for coming on the festival and secondly yeah, if you've sure. got any advice for for anyone out there whether it be a tattooer or someone want to get into tattooing or just advice in the industry at all or if you just want to say sure. goodbye you can do that as well <laughs> yeah so I mean, I'm not going to say goodbye, but I might start one of these uh, only because we had the Grand Creepers podcast and it's kind of been on the down just because uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We have a ton of episodes. We have Bank. We have Matt Frozen. We have uh, Tony Donaire, uh, a bunch of other people, a bunch of cool <laughs> tattooers we've, we've gotten interviews with. I just don't have any time to edit them. Uh, yeah. We have Sam Clark. Are you doing them in person or are you doing them? Yeah, like yeah. This? We did a bunch in Bali last year. And that's how I got Sammy, Tony, Alvarito. I mean, Man. we got a ton of good tattooers, dude. Um, yeah. We got, we got Chris. Uh, this, the, you know, sound was funny. But that's why this is great because it's just like go it's on the fly, no editing. That's it. You know, we're going to meet that's up it, at 2 o'clock. But anyway, um, yeah, man, you're doing good stuff. Try my best, mate. I'm just, I'm just killing my boredom. That's what it is. <laughs> Dude, you're doing a good job, man. But thanks for having me, man. <laughs> it's all good, man. Um, for, come and guest with us, cause yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, uh, and fun. when you come, we can do maybe do a podcast for you for your your one, and then maybe yeah, yeah, if yeah. I'm carry on doing this, we can do a proper one when you're over here as well. Yeah, we were supposed to do your episode in London, but you didn't go. Sorry. All right, bro. <laughs> Later. See you later, mate. Nice see you. Hey. Hello, mate. How you going? Nice see if I can hear you. you got to get her in the frame as well, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you've got a big head, but come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. It's, it's hard getting to... Did you, did you do it landscape or did you do it... No, nah, we couldn't figure it out. So we've had to go, had to go profile. So that's the, that's the hard thing, but we'll figure it out, mate. How you it's going? Fine. Yeah, good. I mean, you guys must be so bored. You've been in quarantine for so long. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been uh, we uh, got into quarantine like the day they actually brought it in for like returning travellers was the day we landed back in Australia. And how long so ago was that? Weeks of... Hey, how long ago was that? That was um, March fifteenth. So we've been and and we had a two week not allowed to leave the house like full on lockdown thing. And then um, as soon as that expired, they brought in the lockdown for tattoo shops and everything else. Oh, so everything shut down. Yeah. So it's been a while, but. Look, it's not the worst thing that's happened in my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not even in the top 10, so I can, it's, it's, it's fine, you know? Um, yeah. What have you been doing? What have you, because I know Sam, Sam's been doing loads of pet portraits. Mm -hmm. Loads of pet portraits. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how, I've given up. Because it's something I, to do, you know? It, no, it is, but I'd like, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I, I, just, I, I try my best to, to do, the, and it just took too, too much. And, yeah, I couldn't like justify the price and stuff, and so I, I'm I'm out on pet portraits now. But yeah, you've done so many. <laughs> but they were so good. Y yours are so good. <laughs> but, um... no, I, I don't know. It's honestly, I think that if I didn't have something to do all day, I'd go a little crazy. So it's yeah. I'm okay with it. To yeah, be honest. no, I think I think that's key because I mean, I've, yeah, I've been trying to keep busy, but it's uh, no, those pet portraits are too difficult. I can't I can't keep doing them. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, uh, so I just want to quickly, firstly, how did we all meet? I know I met Sam when I came to Canada for the, I think the first time or second time, maybe. And you were already working at Simon Spade at that point. Or you were guesting at Simon Spade. No, I was guesting. I was guesting. It was like, it was shortly before the Winnipeg convention, I think, a couple of years ago. Right, and then, right, right. Uh, Yeah, so I met you then. And then, Matt, when did I meet you? <laughs> I I'm not remember. really sure. I was trying to think of this and I can't, I, I mean, I'm sure it was at a convention. Most, um, yeah. Probably at a convention no. after party. 
Yeah, um, probably. I think. I think it was actually. Point? I think it was the Venray. The Venray convention. It might have been, but um, I was just thinking when you were talking to Bobby, I might have met you at the same time as him at the London um, convention briefly. Um, yeah, maybe. Because oh, actually, maybe not. Nah. I just feel like I would have remembered you because every time you're at a convention, you've got the most ridiculous, I mean, look at your hat. Your, <laughs> your, your outfits are always something to behold. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I, I feel like if it was at London, I probably would have remembered that. Okay. Well, yeah, I can't remember. So well, I, cause uh, I mean, Venray, I know, cause I, I saw you, I remember I saw you outside of the hotel. And then I think we got into a cab and then my friend who was with me was like, who's that? And I was like, oh, that, that's Matt. And then we got your like stuff up on, on my phone and my friend was like, oh my God, he's, he's so good. And I was like, hey, he's all right. <laughs> and <laughs> exactly I think, you to yeah. <laughs> and I think that's when, that's when we kind of hung out properly. If, even if we'd met before, yeah, that, yeah. We, that was the, like, that's when we yeah. hung out properly. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I think, I mean, that, that, that convention was the strangest convention I think I've ever, I've ever worked at. It was I, up there, it was one of the, like, it was polarizing, wasn't it? Well, it, it, it was so, because I remember just, I remember being there, and so, just to explain to, I guess, people that are watching, I got an, an email from this guy, maybe two years before this convention, and he emailed me saying, Hey man, I really want you at the convention. Like I'll pay for your booth. I'll pay for your hotel. I'll pay for everything. Um, just, you know, I really want you to come. And I think I said, yeah, that's cool. But then it just, it didn't happen. And then every single year he would, he would message me. And then finally, I think he came up to me at a convention and was like, dude, please. And then gave me the invite and said, look, I'll pay for everything. Just come. And I was like, holy, like he really wants me there. And um, so I went and then the whole convention I was kind of a bit awkward because I was just like am I like the only person that's not paid for anything and then yeah. by the end of the convention we'd all figured out that he'd paid for everyone exactly yeah. like every <laughs> single <laughs> artist that was there <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I mean that, and that convention was probably the biggest convention I've ever been to in terms of like the stuff that was in it or like the the um what are you doing I need my charger Sorry, one sec. <laughs> Sorry. She's hovering and... <laughs> Don't turn my bloody phone charger in. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hi, right. Belle. Hi, Belle. Hi. No, don't <laughs> ignore her. <laughs> she, honestly, she's been fucking um, in and out and, like, in the corner of my eye, I can see her and it's, like, putting me off my stride. I'm listening. You can't listen on your phone. <laughs> She's, do you know what it is? It's because she's so used to the limelight now that as soon as I am online, <laughs> she's like, I can't have this. I've got to be involved. Yeah, I was going to do this just with you, but then this one was like... <laughs> I, believe, I believe I asked her first. <laughs> you did not ask me first. <laughs> did I not? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, let's get back to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a look what I've written down because uh, I've lost my sure. train of thought now. Uh, let's let's kind of keep on the on the convention train because I know you guys you both did quite a lot Matt more than I think any tower I've ever met um, and just traveling in general like what, like when did that start and what what is there like a motivation to you starting or was it just you, because you could you did yeah well for me it was always um, something that I saw as kind of a, a perk of, of the job when I started. And, and, you know, a lot of tattooers I looked up to always said it's a great way to learn and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was always like, yeah, you know, I'll do it one day um, sort of thing. And then um, I just had a couple of things fall my way with my dad working for an airline and I got discount oh. flights until I was 25. And, um, and I also had a European passport that I managed to get, which I didn't know I was a dual citizen until... Um, so how, until is, that, I, is that because one of your parents is, is from Europe or...? Yeah, yeah, my mum's finished, so right, right, right. Um, so I was able to uh, to maintain that. So I sort of had a couple of things fall on my lap that made it easy for me to travel and work, and there was sort of a time frame on it with the with the cheap flights and stuff. So it's right. forced me to go out and do it. And honestly, I probably wasn't ready for it. I probably wasn't good enough yet, but 
I think it accelerated my development a lot from, from traveling early. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I did enjoy it. I did learn a lot, um, met a lot of cool people and there was a lot of incentive to keep doing it. So um, just kept rolling with it. And it was always like, I saw it as something that something might change in tattooing, you know, or something might change in my life and I might not be able to do this forever. Right. So that was always the motivation to sort of keep doing it while, while I could. Yeah. And um, lo and behold, look at what's happened now. We can't. <laughs> We can't travel um, know, for, for the foreseeable future, so at least I've uh, at least I've done it for that period while I could, and and you know, um, not not worrying that I didn't do it right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Do you do you, do you think? I don't know about Sam. What's that? I don't know about Sam with the, with the travel. How she started? Come on, uh, Sam, get involved. We've got to hear you as well. <laughs> I don't want to see half your face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't fit very well. Um, no, honestly. It was the same thing. I think it was a, a recognize it was a good opportunity to be able to to do that. You know, yeah. we we have the option of at least of being able to work pretty much anywhere if someone's willing. You know, wants to get a tattoo from us. Yeah, so definitely. I feel like it'd be kind of crazy not to take advantage of that while we can. So yeah, definitely. I think yeah. I also think it's it's a really good, you know, to to obviously meet new people in terms of in, in the industry and like making those connections. Then it means it's easier to travel and actually just guest in spaces and. And I'm sure you moving to Calgary was was based like initially on meeting people in Calgary and, and enjoying it. So I think I think it is super important. Um, yeah, I don't think I would have moved there had it not been for just the great environment with it when I first started guesting there at Siphon Spade. And yeah, you guys, yeah. Um, yeah, just nice to be able to kind of go wherever and meet a bunch of people who do the same sort of things as you do. And yeah, yeah. Um, I also wanted to. Uh, do you think that? Do you think that doing conventions has helped form your style? Maybe, maybe not so much Sam because your stuff is is crazy intricate. But I think maybe it's aimed towards Matt that you keep things because your work, even though it's it's crazy, it's still quite simple. And is that something yeah. that you consciously did because you needed to finish like a big piece in one go? Uh because I find you do that at conventions, right? You just book three days and then you just do the whole thing in, in one go, right? Yeah, it depends. Normally I'll either do like one tattoo a day or if it's bigger, I might do one, two day or sometimes I've done three day projects, which I prefer not to, but more and more I'm getting asked for bigger things. And when I'm traveling, sort of that's the only way you can execute it yeah. in that uh, in that time frame. But um, not consciously, no. Um, I, I sort of like to keep things uh, simple that way just for, uh, for the medium. So I yeah. think it's sort of, stands up well and and is, and is readable and readable over time and um just is solid and has impact anyway rather than sort of over complicating with uh details that aren't necessary um talking yeah, talking like talking to me here <laughs> the king of <laughs> unnecessary details <laughs> um yeah but i don't know that's uh, it probably wasn't you're right maybe 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 at some point i did have a, a deadline i was like you know what but no, so, no, no, not so much, not so much deadline because it, it, it makes you sound like you're you're kind of rushing it to fit. But I just think yeah. like your 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 work works so well with with that time frame. Like it, it almost like marries together. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to get this huge thing done and doing it just solid and like one tone to the next. It works really well with the two. I just wondered if if it was something that came naturally or it's just a, you know obviously a design choice. Yeah, I think it's probably more natural than I've, I've never thought of it that way. So um, yeah, definitely not conscious if if, um, if it had did have something yeah, yeah. to do with it. So, yeah. Um, Sam, I've got a couple of things written down. Um, you're covered in pretty much new school tattoos. Um, I've got a lot of them. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so. well, I mean, what's because I've most of my tattoos are Japanese, but obviously I tattoo in a similar style to to you in like the near traditional thing. Did your work start off more new school and then evolved into what it is now? Or is it just something you like to look at visually and have on you that's different to, to what you like to draw? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say I really ever did anything kind of more new school. I just, there are certain artists that I, you know, really liked their work to begin with. And it's so like, you know, I was, got a few pieces by a few artists that, you know, all kind of that sort of stuff. I wouldn't say it's the only style I liked. I just happened to get a lot of that kind of work for some reason. I, I don't really know, I don't have a good answer to that, to be honest. No, it, that, I mean, yeah, I just, I think it's interesting because I, I find a lot of people seem to, seem to get tattoos that aren't anything to do with their work. Um, 
I just think that's really interesting. Most people I speak to, it's, it's completely different. Um, and I think for me, like, I just, I wouldn't want to be, I mean, I've got a few bits that are like near traditional, but yeah, so most of my stuff is Japanese. And I think that maybe it's just the artistic, like critical mind. I wouldn't want to see stuff that I, I do and I, like, I kind of draw, like I'd rather just something else. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably more um, interesting to you if it's, if you kind of don't know the process. If you can see right, the right, process, right. Something, then it kind of takes away the magic of it a little bit. I think that's why a lot of us are self-critical of our own work because we can sort of pull it apart in our own head when we're looking at the finished yeah, product, yeah. whereas everyone else just sees the finished product. Right, so right. Uh, that's probably got something to do with it. Yeah, may yeah, maybe like if you don't understand it completely, that's, that kind of the magic is still there. But if you, you understand how things are like put together, you're like, yeah. Yeah. What do they say? That you don't want to see how the sausage is made? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I mean, I've never heard that. Something like that. It <laughs> yeah, Something else I wanted to talk about as well is, um, is competitions, uh, like tattoo competitions, because I know that you're well versed in those competitions. And I think every convention I've ever been to when you're there, you have won a competition. Right. What... Um, I mean, is that something that you, you thought would like help your career? Is that something that, that you just, because you have a competitive streak or, I mean, what's the reason for entering all the competitions? Um, just because, it, honestly, it was just because it was fun. And when right. I first started doing conventions, there was comps on, it was just something to take part in. It was just another part of the convention. And I just like to, if I'm doing something, get involved with it. Yeah. Um, and that was pretty much it. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, started winning a couple here and there, but it's not What do you like mean winning a couple here and there? You win every single time you win that. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, yeah, but it's not really um, anything that I pursue for that. Like, I don't do conventions to do the comps. Like, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I've even stopped doing them lately because um, you find that the more and more you win, the more and more friends you lose over it. So yeah. it's like, it's not, it's not worth that much to me, you know what I mean? But in terms of, and I don't need that, that validation, I guess, from, from, you know, three judges, but it's just a fun thing. You get to stand at the end of the day, have a beer with the other artists. Yeah. I'm working all day, you know, so you get to see your friends and see what they've been up to, check out their finished products, hang out in the line. And then at the end of it, it's a bit of a raffle and somebody, somebody wins something, but, um, it's not, it's not a big deal. really. That's the, no, that's it's not, it's not. Deal. And, and I think it is, you know, I've talked, I've, I've talked badly about com uh, competitions before just in because my own experience is that, you know, I, I told the story last time, but I was on a judging panel and I think I've told you guys this story as well, but I was on a judging panel and I couldn't get the tattoo that I wanted to win to win. And I think from that point, I was just like, what, like, what kind of what's the point? Like, if the judge can't even get the, the tattoo that, you know, want, they wanted to win, then, you know, it's so difficult. And I know Sam, Sam was a judge when she was judging one of my tattoos and, I didn't win, Sam. So what's going on? Hey, there? I, uh, there's only so much I can do. You know that. <laughs> you know what it's like. <laughs> Don't play me. But that's no, no, a perfect no. example of why people shouldn't take it to heart or take it too seriously. You know what I mean? It should just be a bit of fun. Yeah. And you shouldn't be... The thing is, only one person's going to win. There's going to be 30, 40 people who lose. It doesn't mean your tattoo's bad. It doesn't no. mean... You know what I mean? So, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I don't know. Your, your tattooing shouldn't be for that. And... If, if it's a bit of fun, then I'm okay with it. But if it gets beyond that or people are too competitive or take it too seriously, then I don't really want to be a part of it because it's not fun for me anymore. So um, you, you, you say this, but if you're winning all of them, then you don't see the side, the other side, when we lose to you every time. Yeah, I'm having a fucking blast. I don't know what you've got problem is. <laughs> so I remember, I remember the, um, uh, I think it was the Montreal Convention and... I think I beat you one. I beat you, and then you ended up winning best of convention or best of show, and you were like, yeah. and you had this like huge trophy. You're like, yeah, you may have won the day, but I won the <laughs> show. Like, That's right. Can't win. I can't beat him. <laughs> I remember that. You're so bitter. Yeah. Oh mate. The thing is, like, you didn't exactly win with the most with the most graciousness <laughs> no. either. On no, the, I'm on terrible. The I'm ter even though I know I absolutely no it's it's you know it doesn't mean anything at all but i've got such a horrible like competitive streak that i can't do it and it's probably it's probably a reason why i shouldn't enter the competitions anyway because 
I, yeah, I'm, I'm horribly competitive. And even though I know it's rubbish, even though I know it doesn't yeah. mean anything, I'm still like, I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah, you can't be too bitter if you, if you don't, you know what I mean? But no, um, I think, I, obviously, afterwards, it was all, it was all a joke. I was like, it was all, you know, I'm not talking about that stuff. situation, but I just meet people in general, you know? So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Do you, do you, guys, do you guys find yourself, do you, would you say you were both competitive? Um, I'm definitely extremely competitive in almost everything I do in life. Um, the funny thing is though, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I am extremely competitive with tattooing because it's not why I tattoo. Right. Um, I don't, I don't really compare my work to others. It's more like that's, that's my whole life is tattooing and that's different. But if I'm playing a sport or playing a game or something like that, I, <laughs> I can't switch it off. All of a sudden, that's it. I do get extremely I just, competitive with I just I saw I just saw a comment from uh, my friend Ali, and um, we we organise a, a charity football match every year for the Brighton Convention. And again, charity is fun. Like most people that are playing, aren't particularly great at football. And uh, I, mate, I celebrate like I've won the World Cup. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't I can't help it. I think. I know you said about like not um, you're not bringing it into tattooing, but I, I definitely bring it into tattooing. But in a way that I see everyone like is a lot better than me, and I want to improve myself constantly. I think that's that kind of, I think that's kind of synonymous with being competitive, and I think yeah. that's how it translates. I don't know if it's if that's how it, maybe that's how it works for you as well, or just not at all. I'd I mean, say so. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Um, it just it just motivates me to see what's what's possible, you know, and and, and yeah, if I'm not doing the best um, thing that I can possibly do, or if someone else can do it, then I can sort of achieve that too. So mm. it definitely drives a standard of work, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Do you feel competitive as well, Sam, or is that not in your? Yeah. Yeah. No, I do. Um, I I feel like I'm pretty competitive about, about everything, but I don't let it. It doesn't get to the point where it causes problems for me. I'm not, I mean, yeah. I'm not really competitive with anyone else. I'm mainly just mad at myself if I think I do a bad job or something. Yeah, but, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a really good point. Being, uh, and I think that's really important, just in tattooing and, and anything really is, is, you know, be competitive with yourself. And I think it does push you to to be better. Um, yeah. And, and I think that. Yeah. Sorry, Mom. Uh, oh, I was just gonna say, I think that like even if I am, yeah, you know, it's hard not to compare yourself to others. Of course, you know, I think we all do it, but. Yeah. You know, I'm still not looking at their work being like, oh, fuck them. They're so much better than me. I'm just like, oh, shit, what do I need to do to get better? Because they're obviously so much better than me, right? So. Yeah, I think that's, just, yeah, that's a really good attitude. Mm. Definitely. Um, Matt, can you tell me, are you comfortable talking about uh, the ink story that you told me a few months back about the your own <sighs> brand of ink? Or do you not want to talk about that? I don't want it to, probably not. I don't want to talk about that. I You're gonna get everyone to... like, oh, what's he, what was he gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want it to come across in the wrong way in a in a short time frame, but um, yeah, no, that's cool, um, no. yeah. So we'll move on. To yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> so when when do you plan to when do you plan to come back to to Canada? Because you're you're uh, I don't know. If, I guess you you people know now, Matt, that you're you're coming here, or yeah. So that's the plan of uh of uh got a visa approved so um i just can't use it at the moment so my plan's going to be basically like it was but um just to juggle my time between summer basically so summer yeah. here and summer there mixed in with the travels that i normally do that's not um, fair mate you're not allowed to have a year worth of summer <laughs> Bloody <hell I'm> sorry. <laughs> you've got to suffer summer to winter <laughs> um but yeah as far as coming uh, so i had everything sort of set up and i was trying to get all my ducks in a row to, and i had a plan set um to juggle all this and then obviously the world blew up so at the moment there's no flights going there so we don't know when they're going to start so um, so crazy man yeah so just to wait and see at the moment i'll try not to worry about it or add to the noise or speculation too much i'll wait until there's some certainty and then i'll set another plan after them but until then i'm just guessing like everyone else yeah. so. i think that's that's probably for me that's kind of the worst thing about it is like there's no there's no set date there's no like goal date everyone's just like we don't know, like, it's just, it is what it is. And because if, if they were like, okay, we're going to open up in on this day, then at least I could be like, okay, well, I can kind of like juggle my money until that point, or I can kind of put things in place until that point. But you just don't know. It could be a month's time. It could be two months time. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so it's a big, big wait and see, but um, that's okay. I'm, 
I'll deal with it when it comes and yeah, we'll figure it out. And, yeah. yeah. But so, so are you are you going to come back as soon as you as soon as you get let out of as soon as you can, or are you stand there for a bit still? Well, it depends on how the situation's changed. So I came. I did, there's a lot of things I've got to take care of here first, and a lot right. of clients I've got to take care of. Yeah. Um, so basically, once we we'll see what happens first. We'll probably get back to work here before we're allowed to travel. So right. that might be one of the last things that reopens. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to see how the dominoes fall and in what order and um, and then figure it out based off that. But um, the plan will still definitely be to come over because I've got a lot of commitments in Canada still now as well, as well yeah. as lots of other places around the world that I can't get to. So basically, I'm just going to have to restructure everything to be able to meet those commitments for clients and conventions yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll figure it out as it comes. Plus, you've got to come over and see my shop when it's done as well. So. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, keen to see that. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Had to squeeze that in there, didn't you? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I feel because obviously yeah. you're, working with, uh, you're working with Sydney at the moment, so I can't steal yeah. you just yet, but I do want you guys to at least do a guest spot across town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just for one day. Just come over for one day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really not too much of a chore. Yeah, this is going to end in the set because uh, it's got like an hour time limit. So I'm going to um, just say goodbye now. Sure. Um, yep. Thanks, Thank Bobby, for eating into our time as well. And yeah. <laughs> What's that? Uh, say that again, mate. Bobby for eating. Yeah, he ate into our time. He stole four minutes off us and I want to... Mate, when you see him, just slap him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the chat anyway, Ant. And good. Uh, good luck Thank and we'll you see guys. you soon. See you later, guys. See ya.